Hey, good morning uh, to, to everybody out there. Those of you on the uh, West Coast, I'll say good morning. Those on the East Coast, uh, I think it's good afternoon uh, at, the, at this time. I'm Jim Gurney, the Chief Operating Officer of Workshops for Warriors. Uh, just like to say thanks to everybody for taking the time to show up to this. Uh, this is our second in a series of fireside chats, uh, and we'll be talking about uh, issues that, uh, and timely issues that impact military veterans and the advanced manufacturing industry. Uh, so uh, it's great to have everybody here. Now, we are uh, extremely lucky this morning uh, to have Jim Hoffman with us. Uh, Jim is the CEO of industry giant uh, Reliance Steel and Aluminum. Uh, you know, he, he is where he is, and Reliance, frankly, is where, where, where they are uh, because of his immense amount of knowledge, uh, expertise, sound judgment, uh, and, and bottom line, leadership. Uh, and, and never underestimate the, uh, the, the impact uh, that the leadership of one man can make on, uh, on a large organization. Uh, and I think Jim exemplifies that. So, Jim, th thanks very much for being here with us this morning. Thank you very much for having me. Pleasure to be here. Great. And uh, mo modifying uh, or uh, moderating our discussion today is uh, Hernan Luisi Prado. Uh, Hernan is the founder uh, and CEO of Workshops for Warriors. He's a Navy combat veteran uh, and, frankly, one of the most one of the smartest and most driven individuals that I know. Uh, you know, those of us who are veterans, uh, I'm a retired Marine, uh, are, we're, we're lucky to have uh, Hernan in our corner uh, because he has done uh, so much for military veterans uh, in transition uh, and has done so much for the advanced manufacturing industry. So uh, Hernan, great to have you here working this with us this morning. Thank you very much, Jim Grooney, and thank you, Jim Hoffman, both of you for, for being here today. I really appreciate it. A real quick, a couple of uh, admin notes before we get started, and I hand it over to uh, to, to Aaron on. Uh, we're going to stop at some point of this, and we're going to try to go to Q&A, time permitting. Uh, you have a Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. Please submit your written questions there. Uh, I'll read them. Uh, and again, time permitting, I'll pass them to Jim and uh, Ernan. They'll give their thoughtful responses and, uh, and hold a little more discussion, and we'll get to as many as we can before time runs out. Uh, you also have a chat function at the bottom of the screen that you can use to communicate with one another. Participants can talk to one another, uh, or you can leave your contact information for us, and we'll stay in touch after uh, after this is over. So without further ado, uh, Ernan, take it away. Thank you very much, Jim. So for those of you that do not know, Jim Hoffman uh, is the CEO and chair of Reliance Steel Aluminum, and they own literally hundreds of other companies throughout the United States that manufacture steel and everything that you make out of steel is probably can be obtained through one of the Reliance Steel Aluminum companies. And they've been a stalwart supporter for almost 10 years for Workshops for Warriors. And not only do they help us financially, they help us with steel. And when we first started out, we had two welding booths that uh, Mark Edwards, thank you if you're out there, donated and helped support. We went from two welding booths built with Reliance Steel and Aluminum Steel to 44 welding booths. And that's as a result of true patriots like Jim Hoffman, Mark Edwards. And I can't thank you enough for what you do. Not only do you help us with money, with material, but you connect us with people throughout the United States. You're a true patriot and an example of what American industry can do when they put their shoulder to the wheel. And I truly appreciate your, your, your support. Well, well th thank you very much, Renan. Like I said earlier, it's just absolutely my pleasure to be here today. And as you all know, Reliance Steel and Aluminum and Workshop for Warriors have been working together for a long time. And it never ceases to amaze me, the quality and the vigor and the work ethic and the skills of the individuals that you're putting out down there. It just, it just does my heart uh, Good, good it's a, to see it. So thank you for everything your organization has done. And, and uh, let's see if we can't keep this thing going. Well, thank you. And a shameless plug for those that, that do not know anything about Workshops for Warriors. Uh, Workshops for Warriors is the only accredited school in the nation that does training, certification, and placement for veterans and transitioning service members into advanced manufacturing careers throughout America at no out-of-pocket cost to the graduate and since 2008. We've been certifying and training people into careers throughout America, over 850 graduates with average salaries of $60,000 a year. And right now, this is important because there are 720,000 unfilled manufacturing jobs across the country. 
And by 2030, this is going to grow to 2.1 million unfilled positions in the United States. And this is a preventable but persistent skills gap that will affect us almost a two and a half trillion dollars in lost economic output. So, Jim, we've talked a lot about how top manufacturing companies like Reliance Steel and Aluminum Company uh, say that there are not enough skilled workers, there's no training pipeline. And as you know, at workshops, we believe that the answer to this is establishing the scaling uh, national training program, which is what we're doing with our N10 manufacturing training. In your, opinion, in your opinion, does the skills shortage exist? Do you see it? And then what steps have you taken to try and fill that skills gap over the years? Well, yeah, a great, good question. Uh, do we see it? Sure, we see it. We, we, we see what's coming down the pike. I mean, uh, this is, a, this is a, a critical time very critical time in America's uh, history. Um, we've uh, just come out of a pandemic or coming out of a pandemic. Uh, I don't wanna go back and relive that, but it was, uh, we learned a lot of lessons. And uh, our company has been built around a certain model over decades. And the first and foremost, uh, our, part of our model is to, to care about the, cell, the safety and health of not only our colleagues, but also our customers, our suppliers and our communities. And we've done that. And that helped us get through this pandemic. And, but we've learned a lot. We've learned a lot about how to be more efficient. Uh, so our company is well positioned. And I, you've heard me say time and time again, America's gonna need Reliance to rebuild. And uh, now's the time. And we're gonna need more people. And we're gonna need skilled labor uh, for a long period of time. Um, in my career, which has spanned 41 years, um, there hasn't uh, our has been what we call a sexy industry, and a lot of a lot of younger folks, you know, they they decided that you know trade schools and things like that are not in vogue, and that's not the way to to uh, to have a wonderful career, which is I think they were dead wrong. But we've gone through a couple of decades of that, and uh, the the good news is right now there are organizations like Workshop for Warriors that is bucking that trend. And Hernan already just talked about how many jobs are going to be available. And the folks that, that, that we're turning out at Workshop for Warriors fit that bill very well. Uh, skilled labor, uh, you know, it, it's one thing getting laborers. Uh, you can get laborers, but you have to teach them. Uh, you have to teach them new skills. You, it takes a while. It's an investment. Everything in business um, it kind of revolves around your, your return on invested capital, whether it's human capital, time, money, uh, like you're doing down there. Um, uh, so so it's, it's very difficult to get the skilled people and to be able to, to uh, certify and train people uh, with welding certificate. I believe nine different classifications of welding and machining and 3D printing and some of the wonderful things that you that you, you folks are turning out, to, out there. I, I wish Reliance could hire all of them, but it just doesn't work out that well. We know we have to spread the wealth, but we just need more of them. We need more people. And like I said earlier, um, regardless of politics or what administration's in or not in, uh, there's a lot of discussion around uh, what America's gonna need. And what America's gonna need is skilled laborers uh, because this infrastructure is broken it needs to be fixed. Uh, and there's a lot of metal that goes into that. Now our company, we don't manufacture metal. We do a lot of value added and problem solving uh, when it comes to, to produce metal. Um, and uh, we, 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 we need the folks that are coming out of Workshop for Warriors. And we hope, we, we hope to get our unfair share of those graduates, but uh, we understand it's competition. I think mean, all of the graduates that have gone to work at Reliance Steel and Aluminum Companies have been very, very happy, not only with the work ethic, but with the camaraderie and the corporate culture, and you know, that's led by you. And yeah, well, the, the, well, your... well tell you, it, it makes our job easier. People have asked me before, many times, I don't know why they asked me, but they asked me, you know, how did you get to that job, or you know, tell me what's a good leader and what happened. It's pretty simple stuff. You, know, you start out with work ethic. Uh, and a lot of times that's really not your fault, that's your parents' fault. Or in, in this situation, it's the military. It's the military who, uh, who uh, 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 trains out this work ethic. So, you know, when we, when we get to hire a, a, a man or woman uh, from Workshop for Water, they start out day one with the work ethic you need. That's first. Second, skills. 
uh, you have to have some kind of skills. You come to you come to work for a company like uh, Reliance or some other companies that are out there. Uh, our job is to uh, cultivate those skills. Folks coming on workshop for water, they have skills. Trust me, they have skills, certified skills in things like uh, welding and, and machining and, uh, and and those types of things. So, and then the third one, and there's only three: work ethic, skills, and patience. And I'm not sure how you how you can teach patience, especially to type A personalities. But uh, it uh, it really does. Uh, it, it, it you makes our you make our job easier when we're able to uh, hire folks out of uh, workshop. Thank you. And I think the military teaches everyone patience. The the epitome of that is what we refer to as hurry up and wait, where you're literally jumping through hoops, sweating through your uniform. You show up at formation, now you have to wait four hours before something happens. You're wondering to yourself, like, why did I do this? <laughs> and that's one of the things that I think Americans don't realize is that it takes anywhere from four to 40 months to get an American citizen to become a U.S. service member. And then it takes about five days for the military to train them to become civilians again. And that's really where Workshops for Warriors comes in because America loves her veterans, but what America needs is welders, machinists, machinery repair technicians, and that's what Workshops for Warriors produces. 3D printers, computer-aided designers, computer-aided manufacturers, and then we provide accelerated training programs four months long with an opportunity to earn nationally recognized credentials since 2008, right? So we didn't just start. And then we put people into careers throughout America, you know, Reliance, Facebook, Google, Boeing, SpaceX, Tesla, and they are helping to rebuild our nation. And they're rebuilding our nation. They're getting an opportunity to serve again. And this is one of the things that I love about Workshops for Warriors, that we're not fixing every issue. But what we do have is a core demographic of people that are already in the job force. Their median age is 25 years old, and they're drug-free, competent, know how to show up on time or early, and they're committed to your organization's success. And the only thing that they need is advanced training, compressed training in a way that they can pick up these skill sets, an opportunity to earn nationally recognized credentials, and then some type of forum where they can select what's the best company for them and then move forward. And for everyone listening, to give you an idea of the scope of the issue, with 2.1 million unfilled jobs, our, our, our duty, if you will, is to help man all of the schools or equip all of the schools throughout the nation that are going to require us. To do that, you know, our, our next project, which we call Building One, is a $21 million project here on Main Street, San Diego. That project has an additional six classrooms. We put through 18 students a classroom three times a year. I can see 324 students are graduates per year. We would need to build 648 schools, and it would take those 648 schools 10 years to satisfy the current deficit. To give you an idea of the scale of this problem, it's not finding a facility, it's not getting you know, the equipment, it's getting the people trained up. And there's literally no better workforce in the U.S. than United States military personnel that have a history of being trained, have a history of doing the right thing every time. And as my old boss, Admiral Roden, if you're listening, you, you're still an impact, sir. I really appreciate it. He used to say the standard is the standard is the standard. And that if you're always inspection ready, you are always inspection ready. And that's one of the things that we do at our school. It's a filter. It's not a pump. The people that come through our program know as soon as they're accepted, we're going to do everything possible from housing to food to child care to whatever it is that they need to make sure that the only thing missing from their success is their effort. That's it. And we've been doing this with a 95% placement and retention rate since 2008. And we need to expand to build out our train the trainer facility for this initial $21 million project on Main Street. Once that is completed by August of 2022, and we're kicking off a $148 million expansion project on another block on Main Street to go up to 25 classrooms, which should give us 1,350 graduates per year. That's what we need to build out six additional national locations and 103 additional schools. That is how you're going to have American veterans. They're going to be able to hold the tide and be able to be the you know go from front line to production line. That's the key thing, and I think that COVID now is making us understand that 
the delicate underpinnings that we've been that we've been kind of building our economy on. And I, Jim, if you can speak to that as to now well, you're seeing this erosion of kind of manufacturing capability. Yeah, uh, that, you know, that we, we could talk about that for hours. I mean, that's the, I think uh, uh, my guess is anybody watching this uh, uh, can simply look around the, the city that they uh, live in or are from. I happen to be from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And those of you who have never been there, it's a wonderful city. And the one thing you'll notice when you go there, I think they have more bridges than any city in America because it's three rivers and they all kind of flow in. I'm not gonna give you a geography lesson, but uh, but uh, any city you live in right now, you see the, you see what's going on. I mean, the infrastructure is crumbling um, and those things don't fix themselves. Um, we're talking about bridges. I'm looking at some statistics right here that I had to read several times. There's 230,000 bridges need re, are in need repair or replace today. That's 37% of the US bridges. Um, that equals 53,000 miles of bridges, 1.5 billion times a day people, uh, people drive over those bridges. The average age of the bridges in the United States is 62 years old. If we started today to try to fix all those bridges, it would take us 50 years to get that done. That's problematic. And that's just talking about bridges. So the, the problem is right there in front of us. We're already behind. I applaud you, Vernon, for, for uh, picking up the pace uh, there at Workshop, and, and it's going to take money to do, and uh, I can, you can count on Reliance to be there for you, to, uh, because we're, we're just going to need uh, uh, skilled laborers, and, and it's, a, it's kind of a gift that keeps on go, giving. I mean, training somebody to do a job and, and putting them out in the, in the, into the manufacturing world is one thing, but uh, the leaders that you're putting out there, uh, they're going to be able to train the trainer. They're going to be able to get out there and, and, and be leaders because it's already it's already uh, uh, built in them. Um, and I can I can see I can see this thing really taking on taking off. Our, you've already had great success, but we've got a long way to go. Uh, one of the things I that I'd like to say about workshop uh, and uh, the being you know called a non non uh, profit organization charity, if you will. To me, it, I mean, we, we were drawn to workshop from day one because it was so simple. It was tangible. They said, you give us X and we're gonna give you Y. And every year, every quarter, they actually, you can actually see graduates going through the system. I, I'm not putting down any charity. There's some wonderful charities in the world, but it's really difficult to see um, something tangible. And that's why we were that's why we were we were uh, uh, drawn to uh, workshop, and that's why we stay with workshop, and uh, we're, we're going to continue to donate um, and and hire uh, workshop folks. But uh, it really is great. It's a great organization. And then you think about it. You know, we happen to be in the metals business. You know, welding and all the different things that you talked about uses metal. So so why not? But uh, it's a great 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 organization. We just need more of them. And I can tell you, Reliance is going to need more of them, more of them, because I just read you some st statistics that are legit, and you can look them up. And it doesn't matter what city you're in right now; you can point to a bridge that you probably don't want your kids or your family driving across, or a water treatment uh, plan, or just the, just that the, the, there's there's 6.2 million uh, water breaks a second in the United States. That's a lot of purified water that's just going wasted right now. That's water, that's water treatment plants, that's the infrastructure. There's a lot of issues. We have a lot of issues and we're gonna need welders to, to, uh, to and, and, and a lot of different uh, trained people to, uh, to uh, you know, fix these situations we have. You know, I frequently have an analogy that is uh, you know, about water that imagine if you had an outside country and it came in and gave us all the water that we could use in a pallet, and then you, we became used to that in 20, 30, 50 years after receiving pallets of water every week at our house for free, we'd say, no, oh, we don't need to build pipes anymore. We don't need to train welders. We don't need a water infrastructure. We don't need spigot because this other country is just providing it for us for free. And then wait another 20, 30 years, and then all of a sudden they say, by the way, each bottle of water will be a dollar. And the whole infrastructure 
that you needed to create that water is just gone. And yeah. COVID has been a wake up call, right? It's been a wake up call. And this is, I say frequently that the spigot for advanced manufacturing training was turned off in the United States about 70 years ago. And now, you know, as companies sacrifice kind of resiliency for cost cutting or profitability, it took 70 years to get to this point, And it's unreasonable on kind of an immature thought process to think that you're going to have a shovel ready project right now that's going to fix it in two years. Realistically, what's your projection of right now if America went all in, how long is it going to take to kind of rebuild this training pipeline and, and get us back to speed? Well, it's going to take, it's going to take a, a, a joint effort, you know, that whether I'm, I'm not going to, you know, get into politics, whether you're a big government guy or a little government guy, doesn't matter, but the, uh, you know, our taxpayers go to something. So we're going to have to uh, focus, uh, focus on the right things in America and the right things are to fix the infrastructure and take care of our own and to uh, bring jobs back and, and, and get people up and running again. Um, I don't know a lot about politicians, but I do know this, they all wanna get reelected. So it must be a pretty good gig. Um, if, if, if you wanna get reelected, what better way than to go back to your constituents and say, hey, look, we're gonna fix all those bridges. We're gonna get this water treatment plant. We're not gonna, we're gonna hire good people to, uh, to get things going. So. Uh, uh, that's one way, um, and that would be nice to see our tax dollars go to things that really matter. Um, uh, but again, I don't want to get political. And the other things, uh, you know, private mm. private investment. You know, America's proven time and time again. Uh, private inv investment, uh, they do uh, most times they do better than the government because uh, they do things like what I was talking about. You know, what is your return? You know, business people, private par private people don't just throw money at, at things they throw money at things that they can get something in return sometimes it's it's, it's dollars uh, uh, a lot of times there's a lot of wonderful people in america who give a lot of money and they just do it out of the goodness of their heart they just do it out of the goodness of their heart they're, they're so their return on their investment is to make them feel good and their investment uh, their return on their investment is to look in the future to their grandkids and their grandkids, great grandchildren, to see what kind of America these folks are going to be uh, 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 growing in. And uh, so, to answer your question, Hernan, that's a very difficult question, but it's it's going to it's going to take a lot of people and a lot of effort and a lot of trained people uh, to 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 get get us back to uh, where we where we need to be. You know, I'm obviously older than you, and my I had a I had a wonderful upbringing here in the United States, and I came from a, a family that that uh, my oldest brother uh, was a, a lifer in the military, and my dad was a uh, fighter pilot in in Korea, uh, and during the Korean War. Now he he jokingly tells you tells me he was protecting the Canadian border uh, out of Buffalo and uh, and down in Yuma, Arizona. He wasn't actually in active, active combat, but both of them are, are veterans, and I'm proud of them. I'm proud of them, and and uh, and uh, you know the government, the, the government, and American people owe a lot of veterans a, a debt of gratitude. But that's whole that's a whole other uh, topic. We're talking about uh, how we can rebuild America, and like I said before, America is going to need reliance to rebuild, but they're also going to need workshop for warriors, tra trained people, to uh, assist with that. You you brought up a great point, which is. You, know, you have a lot of companies like corporate philanthropy and corporate responsibility and civic duty, et cetera. But this is really kind of that intersection where it, I call it Ethan Weinstein, which is one of our board members, calls it enlightened self-interest, meaning that you're doing the right thing for the right reason, but you are getting something tangible and helpful out of it, which is a trained workforce that helps the entire community. And again, we're just dealing with veterans and transitioning service members, because again, for the viewers that are new to us, Workshop for Warriors has Title 10 authority through SkillsBridge, so we can actually get active duty personnel that are six months before they transition out and then help put them through these compressed training programs, which are nine hours a day, five days a week for 16 weeks to help get them the accelerated training and then hands-on experience coupled with credentials so they can get great jobs and keep them. And this is crucial because we're just a small segment of the population. We're not dealing with high schoolers. We're not dealing with elementary school. That's a whole different ecosystem that we are not a part of. But with President Biden's $2 trillion infrastructure plan, there's a huge focus on workforce development 
and veterans and transitioning service members can be the front line for it, the vanguard to help hold down the fort, to go to those communities throughout the United States and kind of get that old steel mill or get that old fabric, you know, factory operational, maintain, train others how to operate equipment, how to maintain equipment, how to come up with products. Because steel is heavy, right? And it needs to be shaped, formed, cut, welded, joined. And these are the people that we train through 3D printing, computer design. And, you know, I'm all for colleges and apprenticeship programs. And I'd love for them to help fill up our forces. The veterans and transitioning service members are the vanguard. So, and they're ready right now. Right? The other people are ready in two to six years, if you're lucky. And the elementary school kids, even longer than that. So, how can companies in the private sector take steps to fill that talent pipeline? How, what's the scale of effort required, do you think, to do something substantive and tangible? Well, I, well, for, I, can, I can speak to our company and just be general with a lot of other companies that, that I know of. In our company, it's, uh, it's expensive. You know, 65% of our SG&A costs are, are made up of, heat, of uh, uh, a cost, uh, the, the cost of people, whether it be pay, incentives, uh, uh, insurance, training. So it's a, it's a, it's a big number. It's a big number. And, and we, work, we work diligently uh, trying to uh, not only uh, maintain the folks that we get to work with, uh, uh, because we, 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 I, I strongly believe that we are a good company and we do care about the folks we get to work with. So, so we make it, we make it uh, one of those companies people want to come and stay. Uh, but 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 you're you're always you're you're always working the bottom, right? Because you have people, you know, older folks like myself, and after 41 years, I, I have some tread left on the tire. But you know, people don't uh, people don't go forever. So you always have to uh, to bring bring people in, and it's expensive and it's very difficult. It's 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 so diff I can't even tell you how hard it is to go through the process of simply hiring somebody today. You have to go six deep. You have to interview and go through the go through the all the different things to get one individual. Some of it's uh, unfortunately related to drug issues. Other, uh, they're just not qualified to do the job. Other uh, work ethic problems. So, so um, it's a it's a lot of work. We constantly are are, are trying to get better at it. We're an innovative company. Uh, we're innovating right now on a lot of different fronts. But we're also innovating on exactly what you're talking about. We see the need. We see the shortage. Uh, there's a tremendous shortage right now of uh, truck drivers uh, in the in the United States, and uh, we're working. Uh, we're working that. Uh, we we own our own uh, fleet of trucks. We have our own employees who are actually representatives. Um, so we just think that's a better way to go. But we need more of them. And we're and we've got schools and we've got certification programs and we pay for a lot of different types of, of training for our folk, folks to go out and uh, um, not not only better themselves, but better reliance. And we're just gonna need more of them. Uh, so uh, so that's that's the way we're doing it. Uh, I'm not sure if it's if, if we're doing enough of it. My guess is we aren't. Uh, we'll, we'll continue to hit the gas and, 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 and uh, be ready whenever that, that day comes, which is today and tomorrow. Uh, I don't know, I, don't, I, I believe we have got 15,000 or so people right now. Uh, I don't know how many we hire a day, but we're working on them. We're working on them because we have the same number rolling out on top. Um, so that's one way our organization does it. Other other companies that I know of have their own uh, uh, training programs, which is great. Uh, I started my career back in uh, in the seventies um, working uh, in steel mills, and they had when I graduated from working in a steel mill, which I swore I never want to do again because I wasn't trained to do it. I hated it. It smelled bad. It was hot and. Uh, they gave the college kids all the work, all the bad jobs. So I, I wanted to make sure I didn't have to do that for a living. And and go figure. Forty one years later, I'm still in the metals business. I'm not making it anymore. But uh, but it's a good plus. It's a good it's a good thing to to a good career. And certainly the jobs at workshop for warriors. That's a good career. That that makes you feel good. I don't. I can only imagine what it feels like to be a, a life a life military person or Hernan like yourself and the folk the good folks Jim and. And some of the people that work for workshop for warriors. I've talked to a lot of you. I've talked to my older brother, my dad. You guys are the most humble people on the face of the earth. Um, when somebody like me thanks you for your service, you just say, oh, it's no big deal. Well, it's a huge deal. It's a huge deal when because you have folks like me who didn't serve, and it really means a lot. So those those kinds of people 
uh, they just really make your organization awesome. So uh, there's a lot of training going on. I went through a training program. It's much different today, Hernan. The jobs are different. The technology is different. Laser technology, 3D printing, some of these things that I can barely spell them. And we, we have to have people that come across that can actually uh, use those, uh, uh, that, that type of equipment. And, um, that, and so, so uh, the, the skilled labor uh, that the workshop is focused on is tremendous. And of course, the other way, um, how about funding workshop for warriors? I mean, they, it, it's laid out there for you. And I'll challenge some of my friends here at the end of the, this uh, little discussion to, uh, to match what we're going to do. But uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's kind of a selfish charity because you, you put in and you get out. And uh, what, what we're getting out is, uh, is uh, well, well worth the investment. So there's a lot of ways to do it. I'm just not sure we're doing enough of it. But Workshop for Warriors is certainly one that you can give a dollar to and get a dollar fifty out. So I appreciate you saying that because that's go, that goes to the point you mentioned earlier about government involvement. I think that Workshop for Warriors really took off about six years ago when we stopped trying to get government funding and focused on private organizations, private foundations, corporate philanthropy units that, that either wanted to do something impactful for low to moderate income individuals, which is what, you know, 98% of our students, which are all veterans, 98% of our students are low to moderate income, and most Americans don't realize that. So now when you wind up with a school that is providing tangible training, $60,000 a year average jobs, and you realize that these are low to moderate income people that we're putting through the program. All of a sudden, you have corporations, you have foundations that have become very, very interested in what you're doing, but they only want to invest in shovel-ready projects. And to get a shovel-ready project, that means you have to own your own land, you have to have architects. In fact, uh, if you're out there, Tiffany, you know, Tiffany English from Where Malcolm, she's doing a phenomenal job at our building one, but there, you, know, you need to have a lot of funding to be able to even get to the stage where you are shovel ready. And we are shovel ready for two big projects, the $21 million project and the $148 million project. And like you said, it's very counterintuitive, but private foundations, corporations, and individuals are the largest source of our funding. And the reason why we've been able to accelerate our growth, even though you'd think that government would be the way forward, you know, you just have to push forward with what works. And like we say internally, as long as it's legal, safe, and ethical, and aligned with our mission, proceed. <laughs> and that's yeah, what we do. Yes, yeah, sir. I'll, tell, I'll, no. tell you, I'll tell you another challenge. If there's anybody watching that has not been in the military, you owe these folks a lot. More, more, more than you can give. However, you got to start somewhere. you got to start somewhere. So uh, that's just the way I feel about it. And I, and I, uh, I think I'm right on that one. The other question I had is, Reliance Steel Aluminum has changed a lot. I mean, not just you, but most of the steel companies. 20, 30 years ago, you had manual mills, manual shears. Now you have computer numerically controlled shears. I've got, I got into one of your facilities. In fact, uh, we were able to get two saws. Again, I want to thank you for that donation. Two Amata saws from one of your companies up here that are fully automated. And if you look back 10 years ago, you literally had one operator on one saw, cutting pieces and taking each one off every time. And now you have seven fully automated saws that were originally programmed by one operator and they're just running automatically creating these things. So as we have more and more automation in factories and steel yards and you name it, you need to create a new kind of a new type of employee that can collapse several different skill sets into one person. And in the military, we call them force multipliers, people that can take several different skill sets and their end result is your success. So they kind of like Marines, right? They just tunnel through whatever challenges and obstacles you present, and they come up with a solution that's ethical, legal, and aligned with your mission. That's a key thing. But back in the military, safety is important, but it's more important to get the mission done sometimes. Now as civilians, right, safety is crucial because in a big company, you don't want someone that gets the, the job done but hurts themselves or others in the process. How, how do you incorporate these new technologies with with a you know, workforce at what average age of 59 years old, how do you get new people, or do you know of any other way to, to get these new people involved other than a you know workshop forage or a training pipeline like that? 
it's it's a lot of everything. I mean, it's just a lot easier to, to get a, a, a pre-trained individual from a workshop for lawyer. Um, and one, one other thing I wanted to comment about, then I can, I'll, I'll answer your question. An, another great attribute of the folks that, uh, that you're graduating down there Hernan, is the fact that they can work on a team. They're just, they're just wired. The day they, they, the day they show up, you're, you use the term uh, uh, shovel ready. It takes a lot of work to get the shovel ready. Okay, there's a lot of work that goes into before you even put the shovel in the ground. So when you have folks that with the work ethic and the skills and the patience and the uh, the ability to work on a team, uh, that helps. That helps tremendously. So to your your question on the uh, on the technology and how things have changed, they've changed dramatically. They have changed dramatically. Our company alone, we spent over over a billion dollars in the last seven or eight years on capex spend about half of which we'll call it uh, on value added uh, equipment. Uh, this technology, this, the technology goes in this equipment is, is unbelievable. Uh, laser technology of which we, I think we've got over 60 lasers throughout the, we've got 300 plus locations all over. Th th I mean, th th this is Star Wars stuff, right? This is the stuff they were talking about. And I can tell you right now, uh, uh, just five years ago, a uh, tube laser, a flat laser you bought five years ago. Today, if you're buying the same laser, it's a completely different laser that's nine times faster. So your, your problem now is offloading, right? So now you have to go look into robotics. You have to look into a whole lot of different uh, good problems, as I like to say, because we're there to, we're there to take the work out of our customers' uh, shops and uh, uh, provide value to them and also provide uh, value to our folks and our, and our shareholders. But the equipment, it, it, it's really amazing. It's fascinating. It's fun to watch, uh, but I'll tell you, it's technical. You have to know what you're doing. And a lot of the times, we, we, you know, we can, anybody, well, not anybody, but we can buy a tube laser for $2.8 million. But we have to have people from the manufacturer come on site and spend a long time trying to get our, our, our folks to learn how to do that. But once they're up and running, uh, because we, 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 we have really fine people, really fine people who can learn these things, but, but it takes time to do it. It takes time to do uh, To your point, uh, this equipment is not only uh, uh, tighter tolerances, uh, faster, just all around better, but it's safer. It, uh, it just the way they build this, equi this equipment now with guards and, and, uh, and uh, uh, infrared cutoffs and all these different types of things. But you don't need, you don't need as many people to, to run them. Uh, you can have one, we, you, we can have uh, one, one operator, a good operator, a skilled operator, somebody with the knowledge to be able to not only run, running a piece of equipment I could probably do. Programming a piece of equipment is a completely level um, and that's the kind of uh, folks that we uh, that we are bringing on, and uh, it, I, I can't I can't I can't explain to you how difficult it is, uh, except when you're able to hire somebody that's already certified to do it. Uh, they, they they think differently. Your folks think differently. They're 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 they, they understand the math. They understand how the thing works. What 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 are we trying to accomplish here? They can put in the work. But it goes to the work ethic. But um, you know, there's it's uh, thank goodness that the equipment's safer, uh, and thank goodness it doesn't take as many people to run it because it's so hard to find people. So when you can get the good ones, you uh, you you uh, you do what you can do to keep them and train them up and keep them interested, and then we just move them around to do that do as much cross training as we possibly can. But the lifeblood to the manufacturing. Uh, 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 mark uh, in industry in America that we that we so desperately need is people coming out of, of workshop for warriors type uh, um, programs that can that can go right in because uh, like I said earlier there's a lot of there's there, there's just a lot of work that goes into this a lot of work that goes into this well I want to Thank you for bringing that up. That's, that's another issue that we have here is we have millions of dollars worth of cutting edge equipment. And that's only possible because we've been supported by some of the best countries, or countries some of the best companies in the world, like Amada America, which makes the best lasers in the world. And thanks to them, we have million dollar lasers on our floor. And we're training veterans and transitioning service members on 
million dollar lasers thanks to Omada, high precision press brakes thanks to Omada, you know, the saws thanks to uh, hem saws. So Doug Harris, if you're out there, thank you. And these are all a bunch of Americans that said, hey, my company makes this product. We want to help veterans, and here's a win win. And that's been, you know, Mike Guerin, who's the CEO of Omada America, he didn't have to do anything, and he did. He stepped up. You know, they connected us to you, and you stepped up. And what, what makes me happy every single day is whatever little challenges we have, we see all these different American companies and CEOs that put their shoulder to the wheel, you know, like Nick Pinkchuck from Snap On, you know, another Marine who's the CEO of Snap On. These are, com- these are people that want to help rebuild America. And as a naval officer, I think, you know, when, when shipping lanes get cut again, when America goes to war again, who would you rather have rebuild our nation? The American companies that are here based in America, that manufacture products, consumables, tools, supplies, material, and the people that served our nation, or do we want to be relying on outside countries to provide the things that we need to survive, thrive, and innovate? And that's, I think, where we can, this COVID has given us this perfect opportunity to kind of pause and go, look at this, look at this horrific situation, but we can make, we, there's a silver lining out of it, which is it helped us realize the cliff that we were marching towards before we got to that cliff. Well, yeah, and I'm glad you brought all those names up. The, co- the cool thing about coming to workshop is uh, all of those people you named, we buy their equipment. Of course, I, I have to pay for it. They give it to you, which is a better deal. I'd rather than give it to you, it to you. But it's awesome equipment, awesome equipment. And the vast majority of them buy our metal to make their equipment. So it's kind of a nice, nice uh, 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 situation for everybody involved. And that's what I'm trying to build. How do we build this collaborative opportunity? I'm the dirty dozen for America again, but <laughs> let's use our talents from CEOs of Fortune two, you know, Fortune two fifty companies together, and let's rally together and do something substantive that's metric driven and that's accelerated, right? With a sense of urgency to rebuild our nation and kind of, you know, create that workforce that America needs. I'll I tell you, I mean, uh, there, there's not a CEO running an American company that, 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 that won't agree with that. I mean, we got a, we have a lot of work to do. Th- yeah, thankfully, we're seeing some reshoring, uh, not enough of it, not quick enough and a long time coming, but it's coming. It's coming. I'll tell, I tell you another, I'll tell you another uh, uh, lesson learned from COVID is uh, these long supply chains that's not a good way to run your business. You know, uh, you've heard me say before, uh, cheaper is expensive. Now think about that. You know, you, if you're, you're, you're running off to all these places and, and for you know, chasing a low dollar, so you don't have to pay your people a, 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 a fair wage so they can uh, live and prosper in America. Uh, okay, well, what does that really get you? Well, there's some companies right now that are, that are, are feeling, it, feeling it right now. Um, you know, it, it's it's a lot better having having your partner right down the street, or, or uh, you know, I understand there's a couple of really big chip manufacturers uh, uh, investing heavily in uh, this, these these two happen to be in Arizona. There you go. That that's how, that you have to start somewhere. You can't just sit around, wring your hands, and say, "Gosh, I wish we wouldn't have done that." How about looking in the future and saying, "We're going to need more chips." How about, how about learning through COVID about what's a better way to run your business? So, uh, you know, shorter supply chains. Our, our company carried this out a long time ago. I'm not saying our company, uh, uh, we're just different, right? We've always been a uh, uh, domestic supporter. Uh, 95, 95% of the metal that we, uh, the carbon that we buy for our company is domestic. That's by design. Um, a, we like to support American manufacturers. B, it helps us uh, with our cash. That helps us with our inventory turns. And, and um, it's good. It's a good thing for America. It's a good thing for our suppliers. Uh, right now, companies like, uh, well, Nucor, who you, you know, and SDI, those guys are building brand new steel mills. They're building steel mills in year 2020 and 2021. These steel mills, you talk about new technology, they're competing against mills that were built in the 40s. Okay. They're going to, and it's not, talk about, uh, Capacity. I think about capabilities. 
uh, Zeppelin Industries, another company that owns a lot of different companies in the technology that they're putting in to how they're going to manufacture metal in the future. Kaiser Aluminum, another company that's investing heavily in, in, in uh, uh, domestic mills. These guys, these, these folks are very, very uh, bright people uh, with great technology and what they're building and what they're going to be able to do for American manufacturing to rebuild America. We need it. We just need more of it. I, and I could go on and on with wonderful companies that, that you choose to spend your, spend your dollars right here in the U.S. And certainly Reliance is one of them. And uh, we get back, we get paid back in spades time and time again uh, because of the decisions we made decades ago about supporting our, uh, our domestic suppliers. Well, not to put you on the spot, Jim, but to give viewers an idea of the commitment that Reliance has made, you know, and and your financial commitment, because not not only do you help us with thinking about how to engage other organizations with our long-term planning, with helping for steel for our new buildings, but if you could showcase an idea of the level of support that you're doing so that those others that, that may be viewing right now, if they're considering a five, ten, twenty million dollar gift, they understand where you're at. Yeah, I mean, I'll 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 I'll, uh, I'll I'll throw it out there as a challenge, right? We're a publicly traded company. You can look all this up. It's not like we can uh, just give money away to anybody we want. Uh, but I'll I'll throw it out there as a challenge. Uh, Reliance is going to go six hundred fifty thousand next year, and uh, all my friends at uh, at uh, Nucor, SDI, Zeckerman Industries, CMC, Kaiser Aluminum, all you all you all you people, women and men, why don't you match that one? I'll, I'll, uh, I'll buy, I'll buy some more metal from you if you do that. But, uh, <laughs> but no, you know, here's, here's a good thing. Um, the people, and it is, they are people. There is a real Barry Zeckelman. There really is a Leon uh, Topolian. There really is a Mark Millett. There really is a Barb Smith. There really is a Keith Harvey. Those are all people that happen to run all these companies. And every one of them I know personally, and every, anyone, every one of them understand uh, how, how important it is to uh, to be a part of uh, the American uh, uh, America period, American industry, American manufacturing, and let's hope that they uh, they can uh, dig deep and maybe match that uh, make, match that reliance uh, uh, contribution for next year. It, it's well worth it. We uh, it, you. You, you'll get your return. Then the other quick question is, can you name or can you think of two or three other Fortune 250 CEOs that might be interested in either learning more about workshops or yeah. know, might, uh, put their shoulder to the wheel? I just named four of them. Pick up, pick any of any, any one of them. You go back, run them back. And uh, no, they're just, I, you know, it, it, like I said, there, there, there's a there's a guy, Barry Zuckerman, happens to be Canadian, by the way, who has a lot of interest in the United States, who is a He's a wonderful person when it comes to supporting the uh, the uh, uh, the U.S. and and Canadian uh, economy, and of course Leon Topalian, who runs the biggest uh, the biggest uh, mill I believe in the world now, but certainly in the United States, and wow. you know obviously Mark and Barbara and and, and uh, uh, Keith Keith and a lot, a lot of those people. I, I, my my guess is if you picked the phone up and gave them a call, they'd all contribute uh, not only with their time but with with their uh, with their uh, cash, they're just they're just fine. Well, I know what I'm doing this week. Then there you go. They're just <laughs> fine. They're they're good people. Well, one of the things that I love saying is that a hundred years a hundred years from now, people are going to look back and they're going to see that San Diego and Workshops for Warriors was the the birthplace for America's green manufacturing renaissance, and you do it by intelligently leveraging technology, talent, and treasure. And you're doing it with your own, with all your companies by incorporating new technologies. And we can do that as a nation by kind of going to leapfrogging a couple of evolutionary steps in manufacturing and coming up with a national infrastructure that can provide cleaner, cheaper, more sustainable power, better communications networks, better roadways, you know, kind of like the the great works or the, the New Deal 2.0, where we, we have a, a nation that kind of rebuilds herself with veterans with transitioning service members and help reposition America as a world manufacturing superpower in a way that we can lift other nations up with us and create a cleaner, more sustainable world. You know, I think that's something that we can all get behind. And I'm going to tell you that uh, veterans are going to be at the forefront of that. 
thanks to you, Jim, and thanks to companies like the ones that you run. So I want to thank you for your time. And uh, Jim, I don't know if it's time for questions or not. I think it is, and uh, and we have a couple that I'll uh, that, that I'll try to paraphrase. Hey, first, thanks to both of you for a uh, for for a great uh, discussion. It did spawn some uh, so, some things here. Uh, so uh, one person uh, says something, words to the effect that uh, hey, Reliance uh, is having, and this is for Jim. Uh, Reliance is having a, a great year uh, so far. The, the, the what do you attribute that success, uh, and what advice? Can you provide to other leaders uh, in the in the advanced manufacturing sector uh, that that would uh, allow them to succeed in what is hopefully soon becoming a uh, post-COVID environment? Well, great question. I, just real, real quick, uh, Reliance is uh, we've, uh, we've we've had a, a good quarter so far. We're a publicly traded company, so we don't talk a whole lot about the uh, future. But uh, we had a great first quarter, and I can tell you. Uh, um, uh, why that happened is uh, because of our model. Uh, first and foremost, it's a very resilient model that's proven to be uh, sound in good times and bad. Uh, but, but more important than, than our model is the execution uh, by the people out in the field and, and, the, and the support folks uh, back at corporate. That, 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 I, I could not be more inspired by the way these folks have, uh, have uh, have done what they that we needed uh, uh, them to do, and what our customers needed them to do to uh, to uh, post post what we posted so far. So thank you for all the all of my colleagues out there for what you did. That's why we're that's why we're as successful as we are. Uh, as far as leadership, there's a lot of different leaders and different leader types. Um, I don't know. Everybody has their own kind of style. Uh, my style is. Uh, like most people's style is based on how you were brought up. You know, I mentioned, uh, you know, personally, you know, my dad and, you know, three brothers and, and an awesome mom. We grew up in a, in a you know, blue collar, uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And uh, uh, I learned a lot uh, from uh, good mentors and bad mentors. And I'm not sure, I'm not sure who I learned more from. The bad mentors were uh, pretty obviously, uh, you know, uh, they leave the scars but they also teach you what not to do when you get into position. And, uh, you know, all those years ago, uh, when I was developing whatever, whatever style I have, um, I, 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 I vividly remember um, uh, watching uh, and, 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 and just in awe of, uh, of uh, some of the sacrifices that our veterans have made uh, and, and the veterans that I got to work with. And by the way, it wasn't my, by choice that I worked in steel mills in the summer during my, my college breaks. My dad, he's still, he's still kicking, by the way, 81 years old in Naples, Florida, Dad, I hope you're watching. But uh, he's a military guy, and he made sure that his four boys were going to work in a steel mill. That's the, way, that's the way you did it back then. But I tell you what, I, I saw a lot, learned a lot, figured out what I didn't want to do. I learned a lot about safety. Tell you that, learned a lot about safety, learned a lot about how hard people are willing to work to get a piece of that uh, American dream. So all these years later, I'm, I'm an operator at heart. Uh, you know, uh, I just, I challenge people uh, within our organization, anybody that wants to, wants to hear, if you can, if, if, if you can uh, take somebody and give them a sense of purpose, that, that goes a long way. Long after Jim Hoffman retires, they're going to be saying, Jim who? I don't, I don't remember that guy, but that guy. But there's going to be somebody. I don't know who it is, or maybe a handful, or maybe a couple of handfuls of people that are going to remember. Probably not my last name, but maybe my first name about perhaps, perhaps one thing I did that gave them a sense of purpose. And I'm not the only one at Reliance. We have a whole cast of wonderful leaders throughout the whole organization that, 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 that buy into that you know, giving somebody a sense of purpose and they can, they can, they can take any organization or themselves or their family to new heights. So that, that's my, that's my version of a style of leadership. Hey, well, I'll tell you that I, I could not agree more on the, uh, on the sense of purpose. Uh, I think mean, one of the things that workshops does pretty well is provide that sense of purpose to transitioning service members and, uh, uh and, and veterans. I mean, uh, you know, we, we, however you want to look at it we give them their next mission we send them on to their next duty station uh you know with, with a sense of purpose uh and that being to to continue their service and continue that towards building 
uh, rebuilding American manufacturing. Uh, and so, so I, again, yeah, we, we are directly aligned on, uh, on, on that one. Uh, had another, uh, had another one come up where, uh, it says you mentioned, uh, what it, uh, what, what, what you see in a good employee, uh, and you mentioned work ethic, work ethic, skills, uh, and patience. Uh, and, and again, I'll, I'll, I'll paraphrase and go around this a little bit, but, uh, uh, I, I know in the Marine Corps, we talk about tactical patience, uh, and, and that's, Hey, you, you don't necessarily want to pull the trigger as soon as you see the first enemy, uh, you know, cr across that, uh, cross that ridge line. Uh, you, you want the tactical situation to develop to the point uh, and, and then you act when it's necessary to, uh, to, to act or when it's best to, uh, uh, to, to act. What did that can, can, and the question was, can you expand uh, upon what, uh, what you meant with, uh, with, with patience uh, being oh, sure. a positive attribute and what, what is that in, uh, in, in your industry? I'd be glad to. I mean, there, there, there's, a, there's a group of folks that um, they, they want my job tomorrow. And they per, may, perhaps they could do that. I don't know. But it, the, the job's filled right now. For, so for all you folks, just chill down. You, maybe you'll get your opportunity. But no, all, all kidding aside, uh, uh, patience, they, what's the old term? Uh, patience is a virtue, is virtue. I don't know. It's hard when you're when you're a type A personality and you want to win and you're competitive. You're always trying to go, trying to go. What I learned early on is that I didn't know everything. In fact, I still don't know everything I need to do. Um, I wake up every day trying to be a better version of myself. Do I do it? Nope. Do I try? Absolutely try every day. Uh, so when I'm talking about patients in, a, in, a, in an organization and reliance, and I'm sure at workshop. Is just be patient. Learn. Learn your skills. Be the very best. I don't care what you're doing. I don't care if you're a truck driver, a laser operator, a, a welder, a inside salesperson, a manager. I don't care what you're doing. T titles are just titles. They don't. They mean nothing. Just do the best you can do. Somebody will notice. Somebody will notice. If you care about we, we call our, our we own a lot of companies our, our group of we call them the family of companies for a reason it's just not a cute thing we try to take care of one another safety and health is such a huge part of what we do and we've learned so much about people throughout this uh this pandemic and uh you know the patience to work with somebody who's 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 scared to come to work you know our frontline workers they went to work every day not knowing about what if they're going to be infected, if they're going to take something home, what are they going to do? We went to, to the nth degree to follow as many rules plus on top of the CDC rules to make sure our people were not infected when they came to work. Um, but uh, you can tell the individuals who are patient enough to follow the rules, you know, to get out, to get out of your car, mask up before you go in the building, take your temperature to make sure that you fill out the proper forms, you stay social distance and all those different things. That takes patience, but, but you have to perform. It, and if you perform, you don't need to carry a sign around and say, look at me, I'm the number one sales guy in Cleveland, Ohio. Somebody will notice that you're the number one sales guy in Cleveland, Ohio, and, you, and you'll get what you want. Uh, if that's what you want to climb the corporate ladder or to, or, you know, you know, climbing the corporate ladder is interesting, um, but but being the best at, at, at something could be more interesting. I think. I think. You know, to 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 uh, to be able to get to the top of an organization, uh, especially if, if you didn't start the organization, it takes a lot of people to help you get there and a lot of luck. And uh, but uh, you know, being the best at something uh, is really makes you feel good. My 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 goal is to be the best dad and the best husband I possibly can be. And I work every day and I don't know what grade I'm getting right now, but I'm, I'm struggling. I'm struggling. No, I'm just kidding. No, that's, so that's patience in, in, in my book. Hey, thank, thank you very much. That's a, uh, that's a lot of good wisdom that, uh, that, that you put out there. So I appreciate it. Sure. Yeah, I think we're, we're, we're probably bumping up to the, uh, at the end of our time here. Uh, Ernan, I, I did have a quick question for you, and you can probably just roll this right into your uh, your, your, your closing comments. Uh, but but somebody uh, so, somebody asked, uh, you know, what, what what gave you the inspiration, or what made you uh, initially want to start workshops for warriors? I would say that necessity gave me the inspiration to start workshops for warriors. I had come back from Iraq and. One of the people that I served with 
uh, rolled up to me with uh, no legs. And, and as they rolled away, I remember telling Rachel, my wife, that we were going to sell everything that we had to do something to help him and others like him. And to Rachel's credit, she said yes. And that's why we started workshops for warriors. And like Jim said earlier, you know, it's been a huge team that has helped us every day. And Jim Gruden, I really appreciate your help. And Jeff Metz, I know you're on the line as well. And Tom Sharp, Joe Real, all these people that have helped us in a very humble fashion, helped us with the best computer to design software in the world through SolidWorks and Jeff met, you know, we met and he said, you know what you need? And I said, yes, your money. And Jeff and Chris, you know, you, you got a checkbook and you've been writing checks ever since. And I can't thank you enough. Same with you, Tom. And these are people that really just had so much desire to help and they wanted to do something. And what we were doing was 80% of what they wanted to do, but it was aligned in the right direction to move forward. And, I guess makes me very happy to come to work every day. Hey, hey, right. hey, Jim and Hernan, if you don't mind, I'd like to thank you both for having me. It was, it was a real pleasure. And, and for the folks out there, let's do this. Let, let's let's uh, help America help ourselves and donate. And it has been an absolute pleasure being with you today. But more important, it's been an absolute pleasure to be able to support and to watch Workshop for Warriors grow from uh, that, that little organization X amount of years ago to what it's become now. I can't wait to see what it's gonna look like uh, next year with all these new contributions. And then 10 years from now, uh, you guys are doing good work. Thank you very much, appreciate it. Thank you, I appreciate it. Well, thank you everyone. Thank you for having us. And uh, next year, actually, we're gonna be moving into our new facility that's gonna be built with Reliant Steel and Aluminum you know, material, like you said, America runs on Reliance and America rebuilds with Reliance and we're rebuilding workshops for warriors with Reliance Steel. Come to our place, August, 2022, you're gonna see a brand new 25,000 square foot building with six classrooms and 186 bright, shiny faces, getting transformative skills and accelerated training to help rebuild our nation. Thank you so much for coming here, Jim. And thank you for everyone watching. Thank you, God bless you.